If you have ever noticed that your smartphone is overheating while using a simple application or while playing a casual game, then this is likely due to the CPU or GPU ramping up to its max clock frequency. Hitting the max clock frequency is generally a good thing when it comes to regular smartphone usage as it tries to complete the job quickly so it can drop the chip back to an idle state. This burst performance can be great when the application is not constantly doing something, but what if we're playing a mobile game or recording some video? In those two examples, the device is constantly doing something, and this can cause it to start heating up while also chewing through your battery life. So in today's video, I want to show you how to underclock the CPU and GPU of your smartphone or tablet using an application that requires root access. The app that I will be using in today's video is called EX Kernel Manager, and it is this from the well-known community developer Flare 2. It is a premium app from the Google Play Store but I have seen some free kernel manager applications in the Play Store as well. However, some of the ones that I have used in the past have either stopped working on modern devices or have disappeared entirely. If you know of a free or open so source kernel manager app that still works, then please share the name of it in the comments section below. The process that I'm going to be showing you today should be the same for any kernel manager application that you can find. The only differences will be that the user interface layout has changed since they should all have a way to set the max clock frequency for both the CPU as well as the GPU of your Android smartphone or tablet. If this is the first time opening up the EX Kernel Manager application, you're first going to be asked to grant root access. Once you have allowed root access to the application, it will then ask you to select a folder on your internal storage that it can have access to. This is so that the application can save backup settings and create backups of your kernel. After we have set all of that up, we can dive into the CPU section. This is where you'll want to configure the CPU cores of the device. And from here, we can change the CPU governor, the minimum and maximum CPU frequencies for the different clusters, disabling specific CPU cores, and more. I want to warn everybody to be careful about which settings you change using this application. For example, if we change the CPU governor to something like power save or conservative, then you are likely to notice the performance of your device dropping drastically. Or, if we change the minimum CPU frequency to something really high, then it could quickly overheat the cores and cause the device to stay in a throttled state. This may be something that you actually want it to do, but just understand that changing these options without knowing what they can do could have a major impact on the performance and battery life of your device. So to underlock the CPU of your smartphone or tablet, we want to select the max CPU frequency option and then change it to something that isn't the largest number in the list. 
you can see on this cluster, we are able to hit a max CPU clock frequency of 1,785 megahertz. But we can drop this to say 1,574 megahertz to prevent that CPU frequency from hitting its max clock. That will reduce the amount of battery that it takes to use that CPU while also reducing the overall heat generation when it's using those CPU cores. Changing this from the largest number in the list to something lower will limit the performance of the device. Setting this to the lowest number will likely cause the device to slow to a crawl. So I only recommend dropping this down a few clocks at a time, for example, going from 1700 to 1500. And then after making the change, test the phone to see if you notice it performing drastically different. If it slows the phone down too much, bring this setting back up a clock or two and then test it again. You'll notice that there could be multiple CPU cluster options here and we'll want to change the max CPU frequency for each cluster if you want to underclock those CPU cores as well. After making these changes, you'll also want to activate the enable on boot option for those core clusters that we're making the change for. We can do that by tapping the power button next to that option and making it turn to blue. If we don't set this option, the application will reset these changes after you reboot the phone or tablet. After you have underclocked the CPU cores to something you are comfortable with, we can then do the same for the GPU as well. This is done by tapping the hamburger menu icon at the top left and then selecting the graphics option. You'll see similar options here including the ability to change the GPU governor, setting the minimum and maximum GPU core clocks, and more. So if you usually play a casual mobile game on your device and you notice that it generates too much heat while you're playing, or if you notice that the phone uses a lot of battery life while you're playing this game, then come to this page and experiment with reducing the max GPU frequency from something that isn't the largest number. The Galaxy S22 that I have right here can hit a max GPU frequency of 818 megahertz but I have reduced this to 545 megahertz so that it doesn't heat up as much when performing certain tasks. Both of these changes can save you battery life and reduce the heat generated while using the phone, and I encourage you to experiment with them on your smartphone or tablet. If you're unsure about what you're changing, just make sure that you don't activate the enable on boot option with that power icon next to it. If the enable on boot option is not activated, then all of the changes that we have made in this application will revert back to their original settings when the device has been restarted. Changing the kernel options 
as we've done in this video, used to be limited to only those people who have installed a custom kernel to their smartphone or tablet. But some of these kernel manager apps work just fine when using the stock kernel. And we can save battery life while also preventing the device from heating up so much by underclocking the CPU or GPU frequencies.